Hello, and welcome to this third video of the GAMS introductory video series. This time we will deal with interactive web applications with GAMS Miro, based again on our vintage cars and trucks model. The concepts we will cover are reporting, we will add some reporting functionality to our model, and we will then deploy this model so that it can be used via a web browser. Technical components we will deal with are again sets, scalars and parameters. For the reporting we will use the universal set and dollar control options will determine how GAMS Miro works. GAMS Miro stands for Model Interface with Rapid Orchestration and it is an interactive web application for GAMS models. Please note that as of now, May 2019, GAMS Miro is still in its beta phase and not ready for production use. If you want to test GAMS Miro, please send an email to miro at gams.com and you will be provided a separate installation of GAMS and integrated in this GAMS Miro. So what we will do with our vintage cars and trucks model is, well, we will add some reporting output to the model to make it ready for GAMS Miro. That's still standard GAMS modeling. And as the second step, we will get it on the web by activating, actually, GAMS Miro. So let's see how that's done in the system. So here we are in the GAM studio and we have already brought up the model from last time and renamed it to vintage3.gms. The first step is, uh, well, we will add some well-defined input and output quantities and just tweak the code a little bit to reflect this. The first thing is, well, in this scalar section we set scalars for the maximum spending budget and the maximum number of vehicle spaces in the barn and we would like to add the number of large spaces to that. The number of large spaces is used down here in line 32 where we set an upper bound to the variable x of trucks to be equal to 2. Just go ahead and add a scalar for this 2 here by just adding one line to the scalar declaration and just call the scalar large and large will mean the number of large spaces in the barn and we will assign a default value of 2 to these large spaces. And wherever in the code we use this number of 2 as the upper limit for the number of trucks which is here in this line here, we will just replace this 2 by the scalar large. And this we will use later on for the Miro application. We have three scalars we would like to set via the, the web interface. So that's quite straightforward. The second modification will be about reporting. Just scroll down all the way as a minimalistic report. We will just display the string solution values and then display the number of cars and trucks, the level value of the variable x and the level value of the variable z, which is the, uh, yeah, the total revenue. So we'll do away with these two display lines and replace them by something a little bit more sophisticated. And for the, uh, yeah, for the report we will define a parameter. Let's say parameter, we call the parameter report. And the set that is spanning this parameter is now not a specific predefined set, but we use the, the asterisk. The asterisk means that the so-called universal set is spanning report and the universal set is comprised of all sets that are in the system already. In our case that's uh, just the set V for vehicle types, cars and trucks, plus any set elements we subsequently define. So let's go ahead and finish up this parameter declaration and we will see how we define this report parameter in a second. Just call it scenario report. And don't assign anything in the declaration, we just end the declaration statement here. And in the subsequent lines we will fill this report with values. So what we would like to display? Well, first of all the number of cars and trucks, right? So we say report of V, that means any element of the set V will get some value assigned in the report. Let's just set this equal to the level values of our variable x, the number of crossing trucks. That's quite straightforward.
And now I would like to add some, some, more, some more data to this. So we say report of, and now that's a new set element we just define in, in the assignment statement itself. Let's say available budget, just to redisplay this in the, in the report, and we set this equal to, to budget, because this scalar declared and defined up here to have everything in one place. And in the same way, we add some more lines. Report of spent budget, that's exactly whatever we, we, uh, we spend to buy wrecked cars or trucks. And what's th this value? Well, this value is whatever money we spend. And if you look closely at the equation definitions, we do have the equation budget, which stays say, stay within budget. And here, in the definition of the equation, we say, well, Whatever we spend, meaning the number of vehicles times the cost of the vehicle type, summed up of all vehicle types, has to be less than, than or equal to budget. And we know already that GAMS reorders the individual terms in the equations in such a way that all the variables are to the left and all the constants to the right. And also the level value of an equation has the meaning of whatever is on the left side of the equation at the optimal value. If the solve statement is successful. So we just set the spent budget equal to the level value of the equation. Equation budget dot L. And what is that? Well, that's just the sum of all vehicle types times costs of the vehicle types, but well, this is exactly the budget we spent. So that's this one. Then we would also like to include the total revenue in the report. So we say report total revenue and set this to whatever the total revenue is at optimum and this is just the value of the variable capturing the, the objective function z dot l. And finally we would also like to calculate the profit we actually make. So we say report of profit, another new set element, and set this equal to the profit. What is the profit? Well, the profit is whatever revenue we make, z dot l, less whatever we spend. That's just the level value of the budget equation. Like, like so. Just to make it look prettier, and we align this nicely. And that's our, our report parameter. And at the last statement, we say display report in order to have the report printed in the LST file. So let's go ahead and, and run this model and see what the output is. Hit the run button. And we see again the block file and the list file. Scroll all the way down to the display statement. And we have here the parameter report that is displayed. We see that, well, we have one, one car, two trucks. If we scroll to the right, we have 3.6 kilo dollars available budget. That's the spent budget was 3.4 kilo dollars. Total revenue was 7,000. And the profit, accordingly, the difference of these two, 3.6 kilo dollars. Also note, if we don't specify anything specific for the, for the display format, we will have this sort of like long line displaying the elements of the display statement. We can correct this or change this by using one of the many uses of the, of the actual statement just before the display command or anywhere before the display command. We say option and in this context we use the option statement to, to determine what format to display the report in. And we say option report column two decimal places column 0, column 1. And what this statement does, and you are invited to check the many uses of the option statement in the GAMS documentation, um, what this statement does is whenever the symbol or the object report is displayed, we'll use two places after the decimal. And this 0 here determines that the report is like this, but in a list format, meaning one entry below the other. So let's see what it does execute this and scroll again all the way down in the list file. We see like an 
nicely or more nicely formatted way of displaying the report. Number of cars, number of trucks, available budget, spent budget, total revenue and the profit. So that's it about determining where's the input to the model. This will be the scalars and where's the output. These are these, uh, the, the entries of the report parameter. So let's see how we configure Miro in order to respect the input and output values. And the way we do this is quite straightforward and very easy. We use the so-called dollar control options. Dollar control options start with a dollar in the first column and they determine how the compiler and the GAM system behave. And in this particular context we use the Miro specific options on and off external input and on and off external output. So the input are the scalars, so we specify on external input before the scalar declaration and definition and accordingly off external input after declaring the scalars that shall serve as a input or external input to the Miro model. And in the same way we define what the output quantities are. As I said before, we do want to display the parameter values of our report in the Miro interface. So we enclose them by the on external output and off external output compiler directives. And because additionally we want to have a breakdown between the number of cars and number of trucks, we also use the values of the variables, the variable x of v, for the Miro display. So we also enclose them by the on external output and off external output compiler directives. And that's pretty much it, what we have to define for a bare-bone, very simple Miro model. Invoking Miro is done via the command line, the command line option. We still have our int var up from last time for the bounds of the integer variables and we add Miro equals launch as a command line option. And what Miro equals launch does, since we haven't used Miro yet, it will create a number of files in the file system, which we will discuss in a minute. And it also invokes and launches Miro, so we see everything in a web browser. So let's see how that looks like by starting the model. Do this, hit the run, you see a number of diagnostic messages regarding the startup of GAMS Miro. And now Miro opens in a web browser. By default we see the input section activated with the input scalars table here, where we can enter scalar names, descriptions and scalar values, but we don't know which scalars we can, we can change yet. And for that we can use the load data functionality that loads data that is defined in the GAMS model and saved by Miro in an Excel spreadsheet to populate this table. So let's have a quick look and switch to the file system to see what Miro has done. This here is our directory with the vintage 3.gms GAMS model. We see here a preview of it. We also see the LST file that's being created by the GAMS run and also the log file. And we additionally see a number of directories like the configuration and logs directory, a R file, some other files created by GAMS Miro. Especially please note that there is a Excel spreadsheet, vintage3.xlsx, that's been created and that takes the default values of the external input values. In our case, these are the scalars. Also note that Microsoft Excel does not need to be installed on your system. Miro does it via a separate subroutine to create the spreadsheet. So let's have a quick look what's in the spreadsheet by opening it. Double click on it. That's the content of vintage3.xlsx. Let me make this a little bit larger. And what we notice is that it does have our three scalars, budgets, basis, and large, with whatever values have been defined in the GAMS model. Also note that my system is set such that the comma is used as a decimal separator instead of the point, which doesn't matter because it's the intrinsic Excel number format. So now we can load this data into Miro. Let's close this spreadsheet. Say, don't save. Just 
use it as it is, switch back to the web browser and click on the load data button here. And the load data button allows us to navigate to our spreadsheet and load the data from there. And browse for the file. Select the vintage3.xlsx and open it. And after we click open and load, our table is populated with whatever default values were set in the GAMS model. Budget 3.6, basis 4, and so on. So now we can go ahead and solve the model by clicking the Solve Model button. Here's a log file and the listing file. After everything is done, we are put into the Output tab. And the Output tab does have our cars and trucks. This is the number of vehicles that was the long text associated to our X variable. And there's a second tab, Scenario Report. If you click on that one, we see in a tabular fashion whatever numbers come up in the report. And you will recognize the numbers that are the same as in the list file display we looked at before. So how can we now make it a little bit more user-friendly in terms of having input values that are selected by sliders, for instance, output values that still show the table, and the number of vehicles as a pie chart, for instance, that displays the traction of cars and trucks we use in our optimal solution. In order to do that, we again switch back briefly into the file system and look at the conf directory. The conf directory created by GAMS Miro has two files, two JSON files that contain data definitions, the model name underscore IO JSON with number of code lines and the yet empty vintage 3 name of the model.json file, which is still empty. And this particular file determines the way the input and output is organized. And we can either go into a file editor, look at the GAMS Miro documentation and uh, write the code, or we can also use the configuration generator provided by GAMS. And that's the way we will do. So we go to a new tab in the, in the browser and enter gams.com forward slash Miro. we get to the Miro page and scrolling down, we will notice that there is a link to the configuration generator, which we activate. We get some information about the configuration files, configuration file format, also a couple of uh, examples. And at the bottom of the page, there's the configuration generator that, that allows us to upload our model name underscore IO JSON file. We'll go ahead and do this select our model name underscore io.json file, vintage3 underscore io, open it up, and we are put into the configuration generator that has several parts to it, or several uh, workflow items, general settings, input widgets, graphs for the output, and tables for the output. We will just leave most of the settings at the default values, because that would be too much for, the, for this particular vid uh, video, and jump right into the input widgets and define input widgets for our three scalars, budget, spaces, and large. So we choose here, generate new widget for model input data, add a new item. And yeah, let's start with the budget. Budget shall be displayed as a slider. You have the choice between different input functionalities here. Just call it budget, descriptive text, enter spending budget in thousands of dollars. And here we set the limits of the slider. So minimum value, let's say we have a zero minimum value, maximum of like 10,000. Default starting value, whatever we had in the model, let's say 3.6. And the interval between selectable values, let's say we want to select it in $100 increments, so $0.1,000. And that's it for the first slider. We want to add some more sliders. I have to scroll up here again and click on this little plus icon. And we will see after the budget slider, we see the next one, which is still empty here. And we select, let's say, spaces. And for the spaces, I'd like to display the text. Enter the number of spaces in the barn. And again, minimum value, let's say 
zero up to eight spaces, let's say. We had four spaces as the default starting value, which can be changed at any time. And it's an integer number, so the interval will be one. And accordingly, we need to add one more slider. Let's scroll up again, click the plus icon, scroll down, and large was the third scalar, call it large descriptive text for slider will be enter number of large spaces for trucks and cars, for instance. And what do we enter as limits? We don't make it dependent on the number of total spaces, which would make more sense, but would be beyond the scope of this video. And we say, well, between zero and eight large spaces shall be configurable for our specific uh, model. The default value was two and also needs to be of integer value. So now we created three sliders for three scalar input variables. And we can click on next. And that puts us into the next section of the configuration generator for the, into the graph section. In the graph section, we will add a graph for the, well, the breakdown between cars and trucks. Click the plus here under the, under the graph. We'd like to display values of the variable x. Title of the graphics, let's say, we call it vehicle type breakdown. And we would like to have a split view between the data table and the graph in one window. And for the pie chart, we use Plotly for rendering the graph. Use pie chart as symbol labels. We have the vehicle types, so the entries of the set V. The symbol values shall be the level value of the variable, because we're interested in the number of cars and trucks in the optimal solution. And just leave the rest at their default values. And clicking next takes us to the next section of the configuration generator, which is the tables view. We just leave everything at, at its default. Scroll down again and finally click on download JSON. That downloads the JSON file to our system. This dialog comes up as a save file. And this file is now in my download folder. I still need to move it into my file system. We switch back to the folder with the GAMS files. We see the vintage3.json is still empty. And I'll go ahead and drag it from the download folder into the configuration folder. Say replace. And I see it's populated with JSON code. OK, so what's the effect of this now? Let's switch back to the GAM Studio and execute the same model again. Actually, I cannot execute it. Why not? Well, because it's still active in the browser. So we need to switch back to the browser, close the tab, say leave page. This will change in the production version of GAMS Miro. Switch back to GAM Studio. Now I see that my run icon is activated. I click on run. Miro starts again and puts me into the data input screen. And now we see that in the data input screen, we don't have the empty table anymore. We do have our three sliders with default values, spending budget in thousands of dollars, 3.6, number of spaces in barn four and so on. So we don't need to load the data because it's like pre-configured anyway. And I can use the sliders to, in a convenient way, change the, the numbers here. Let's still leave them at the default values. Click on Solve Model, which will briefly display the list file and the log file. Put me into the output section, and voila, the output section has a number of vehicles now displayed as a table with the different attributes of the variable and additionally as a pie chart, two trucks and one car, the percentage breakdown. And in a separate tab, we do have the our scenario report again as before. And that concludes our little minimal Miro example. And I hope you got that it's very easy to actually invoke Miro and it's very easy to configure it in a way that it's displaying results on the web, executed on the web, and also accepts input data on the web.
Finally, here are the steps that were necessary for our mini example to work on the web browser. First thing we did is we decided on the web input and output, determined by whatever is between these dollar controller options listed here on the slide. Dollar on external input, dollar off external input, dollar on external output, and dollar off external output. Then we invoked Miro for the first time, and the first time Miro is invoked, these framework files are created in the, in the file system the config directory, the Excel spreadsheet containing the data, and so on. We could have done this with the Miro equals build command line parameter, then just the framework files would have been created. But what we did is we used the Miro equals launch parameter that creates the framework files, and if they are already existing, it updates the framework files, and additionally launches GAMS Miro so that we can see how the bare bone version, so to say, of our model works. Once we did create the framework files and had a first glimpse at GAMS Miro, we fine tuned the JSON file determining the Miro input and output. And we did not use a text editor to change or edit the JSON file, but we used the configuration generator provided by GAMS on gams.com forward slash Miro forward slash configgen.html. After we fine tuned the JSON file, it was the sliders, for instance, and also the graphical output, the pie chart. We ran our ready to deploy GAMS Miro up with the Miro equals launch parameter and were able to enjoy the power of Miro in combination with the web interface. And then we were happy and done. Of course, we did not nearly cover all the features GAMS Miro has. Please have a look at gams.com forward slash Miro for the many, many more GAMS Miro features. Highly recommendable also is to watch the GAMS Miro webinar on the GAMS Lessons YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this movie. Please stop by at our sites on the internet for more information or shoot us an email with your inquiries. Also below, drop us a note on what you liked about this video and what you would like to see in the future. I'm Thomas Meindl. Thanks and see you again.